Greetings! Welcome to part 5 of this journey into object oriented programming in Python. In the previous video, we discussed the concept of type and class, and we saw how to initialize objects and create methods. We also reviewed how instances and classes are related and how we can create class attributes, override them, and so forth. All these things belong to the first pillar of object oriented programming, which is encapsulation. Encapsulation means that we put data together with functions and doing so, we start solving the problem we start with in part one. It's time to move to the second pillar of the object-oriented programming building, which is delegation. The problem we always have when coding is to promote code reuse. This means that we duplicate code and algorithms as little as possible. For example, in the code here, I can see that both OpenLift and OpenSecurityLift contain the line lift of one equal open. Clearly, this is just an example and the code duplication is not very critical. But think about it for a moment. This might be a richer algorithm and whenever we find a bug or a missing feature in it, we have to fix it twice or potentially more times, depending on how many times we duplicated it. This is why we usually say that code duplication is evil, even though, as happens for many things, there are exceptions. For now, let's see how object-oriented programming promotes code reuse. Surely you are familiar with the concept of code library, where you store common functions that are then called by other parts of the system. This is one of the best ways to reuse codes, and we want to achieve the same thing with objects. So the question is, is it possible to use objects and extend them, keeping the common code in a single place? The way to achieve this in object-oriented is through delegation. Let's first discuss what we mean when we say that a class specializes another class. Here we have two classes, animal and cat. After all, this is the digital cat channel and we need cats here and there, right? Anyway, we say that the class cat specializes the class animal when three things happen. First, cat has all the features of animal. For example, it moves. Second, cat can provide new features. For example, it has whiskers. Not all animals have whiskers. A duck, for example, doesn't. Third, cat performs some or all the tasks performed by animal in a different way. For example, it moves, but silently. An elephant doesn't move silently. So, we can recap the relationship between cat and animal, saying that a class cat implements only new or changed features, and delegates the remaining features to animal. And this is delegation. Clearly, in software, this means that the class animal contains code that is not duplicated in the class cat, and that there is a connection between the two, so that cat can use the code in the other class. Before we move to the actual Python implementation of this concept, let's review the two types of delegation that we can find in the real world. The first way to delegate is called composition, and it's well represented by the verb to ha. A car, in this example, has an engine and has wheels. So when you start the car, the car actually delegates this action to the engine. And when you steer, you are actually asking the wheels to move, not the bonnet. Class car, however, has some properties on its own, like color, and can provide them directly without delegation. The second way to delegate is called inheritance, and is connected to the verb to be. In this example, a cat is an animal. You can't dissect it and find the animal part in it and separate it from the rest. You shouldn't dissect cats at all, by the way. In this example, when a cat moves, the action is performed by its animal nature, while when it meows, it's the cat nature that acts. This might sound very philosophical, but has a direct translation into code, so bear with me, we'll go back to Python in a second. Let's start with inheritance that implements to be. Here we have a security lift class that inherits from list. This in Python is expressed by mentioning lift between parentheses after the name of the class. 
lift is called the parent class, in this case, security lift is the child class. As you can see, security lift is empty. We can, however, instantiate security lift and also call methods belonging to lift on it. So it is clear that there is a connection between the two classes. If we check inside the instance, we find the attributes that we know have been created by init, floor and status. And if we have a look inside the security lift class, we find that it's pretty empty. While the lift class has all the attributes that we defined in the previous parts of the series, like max weight, open, close, and so on. There is an important attribute in security lift that is not shown here. It is called basis. It's a tuple, and in this case, it mentions lift explicitly. So this is the connection between the two classes. We already learned that an instance automatically reaches for its class when you request an attribute that it doesn't contain. And here something similar happens. When you call a method that security lift doesn't have, Python uses basis to find the parent class and call the method there. And this goes on potentially with the parent class of the parent class and so forth. We said, however, that classes can perform some tasks in a different way. Third condition to specialize a class, if you remember. In OOP, this is called method overriding, and it's performed in Python, just adding a method with the same name in the child class. Here, security lift inherits from lift, but defines an open method, so whenever you call that method on the instance, Python will use the code defined in this class, and not the one defined in the lift anymore. If you look inside the class, we can see that the method is there now. We achieve a great deal of code reuse with inheritance. Security Leaf here has everything Lift has without any code duplication. To be honest, there is still a small duplication in this example, as the open method of Security Lift basically performs a special action, printing the string, and then just repeats what the parent class does, that is to set self status to open. We can avoid this, calling the parent's method explicitly with super open. Super is a very powerful feature of Python and we will discuss it in depth in a future video. For now, let's just consider that it returns the parent class, which is lift in this case. Now, some exercises for you followed by my personal solution. As always, I suggest you try to solve the exercise on your own and then compare your solution with mine. And please remember that my solution might just be one of the acceptable ones, not the only one. First exercise, modify the security lift class, adding a custom dunder init method that creates the attribute self-locked. Second exercise, change the security lift method open to work with self-locked. This means you can open it only if it's not locked. Third, change the security lift method close to accept an optional L parameter that sets the locked attribute. And fourth, add to the security lift class a close and lock method that sets status to closed and locked to true. The first exercise is modify the security lift class, adding a custom thunder init method that creates the attributes self locked. I have four different solutions for this. So the first one and the simplest of the four is to just override the init method and initialize self-floor, self-status and self-locked to false. The init method here has the same signature of the parent class. A signature is the name and the attributes. So this is init self f s, which is the same signature of the thunder init method in the class lift. There is some code duplication here, as self floor equal f and self status equal s are contained in the lift class, so we can solve it with the second version of this solution that calls super dunder init. This calls, remember, the dunder init method of the lift class. This second solution, however, still initializes locked to false and we might want to pass it when we instantiate the class. So the third version is thunder init self fs and l that initializes self locked to the value passed by the caller. This, however, changes the interface of security lift. So now security lift cannot be instantiated as a lift anymore. 
as when you instantiate a lift you just pass the F and S attributes, the flow and the status, here you have to ask locked. This might be what we want, but if this is not the case we can make security lift backward compatible with lift keeping the same interface. And the fourth solution is that of adding L as an attribute with a default value, false. So in this case you can instantiate security lift as a lift passing just the floor and the status or as a security lift adding the locked value. The second exercise is change the security lift method open to work with self-locked so that you can open it only if it's not locked. And this is very simple, you just modify the code inside open to read if not self-locked, self-status open. As we said previously, however, this duplicates code of the lift class self-status equal open is a line that is already in that class. So we can avoid this duplication calling super open. The third exercise is change the security lift method close to accept an optional L parameter that sets the locked attribute. So when you close the security lift, you can specify what the value of locked is. To do this, we override the close method passing an attribute L with a default value. We call the implementation of close contained in lift and then we set self locked. Here again, as happened in Dunder init, we want to call the parent implementation of the method before we add something different. This might not be the case, so remember that you are not forced to call the parent's implementation and if you want to do it, you can do it at any time in your code, before you do something different or after. The fourth exercise is add to the security lift class a close and lock method that sets status to closed and locked to true. This can be solved in two different ways, so the first one is to just add the close and lock call the super close method and then to set self locked to true. As you can see the code of close and lock here is very very similar to that of close just above. So this means we are somehow duplicating code and we might want to reuse it. So the second version has a close and lock method that calls the self close method passing the value true for the locked attribute. Now that we are confident with inheritance, let's have a look at composition. Composition is very simple, as the new object just contains another object as one of its attributes and calls the methods of the latter explicitly, like any other codes might do. Here you can see that security lift contains a self lift attribute that is initialized to a lift object. When you compose objects in Python, you have no automatic delegation of methods. As you can see here, accessing the floor attributes of the security lift instance raises an attribute error exception because the attribute is not there. So when you want to expose a method of an object that is contained in your class, you have to do it explicitly, as you can see here with open that calls self lift dot open. You might think that composition is useless, as you have to perform the job that Python automatically performs for you when you use inheritance, but this is not true. First of all, as we saw, not every object is another object, and sometimes the relationship to have is a better description of the connection between objects. Second, inheritance can lead to problems and even to code duplication, as we will see in a future video. For the moment, please don't forget composition, as it is a powerful tool. So, this is all for this video. There is much more to say about inheritance and composition, but overall I want you to remember that both are just delegation mechanisms that we put in place to promote code reuse. Thanks for watching.